Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Can you continue, Secretary? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chair, Honourable Members, uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, mm -hmm. colleagues. Um, I think without any further ado, I will ask uh, uh, Ms. Mulobi to present on the uh, annual report. And uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure if it's only on the annual report, it's also on the second quarter uh, uh, performance, but will be guided. And then we'll deal with the questions on the, uh, well, uh, I think it's the annual report. Yes, thank you, Chair. And then I'll deal with the questions on the annual report, okay, uh, research questions. Thank you. Tawa. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, I can hear you, man. Okay. Good afternoon. Yeah, Matawa, maybe uh, before you, I was just saying, maybe, maybe before you proceed, Matawa, just to indicate to the members that uh, we had initially submitted a document, we submitted another one this morning, a presentation. There's no changes to the content. It's just the the format uh, that has just changed to ensure that it's 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 aligned to the colors we used in the annual report. And the last area is that uh, we just added a few comments towards the end on finance. Uh, so if members may have seen that uh, earlier report and may not have seen the report that was circulated today, we just want to apologize and indicate that there's no fundamental change between what was submitted earlier and what was submitted today. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much, Secretary. Good afternoon, uh, Chairperson, Honourable Members, Speaker, and uh, the Administration Leadership. Thank you for the opportunity to present the 2021-2022 Annual Report. Uh, the slide is just providing us with an outline of the presentation, but I will speak to each uh, area when we get to it. So in terms of the introduction and purpose of this presentation is that uh, as indicated, uh, Chairperson, this is the, the presentation of the 21-22 annual report, uh, and it is prepared and submitted in line with FAMPLA, where we present an assessment of how the performance of the institution is or uh, is as at the end of the financial year where there are performance achievements or deviations we highlight that we also confirm that uh, this, this report was submitted to internal audit uh, to ensure adherence to the quality as combined quality assurance principle prior to submission to uh, the auditor general south africa and then the auditor general reviewed it and um, uh, indicated that at the end of the audit that uh, the uh, GPL has been able to sustain its clean audit outcomes. So in terms of the strategic intent for the current um, term of the legislature, Chairperson and Honourable Members, there has not been any change in terms of that. Uh, we are still, uh, you know, working towards ensuring that we contribute to making an impact that improves the lives of the people of Gauteng through implementing our constitutional mandate, which is then represented by the five, uh, you know, uh, strategic outcomes. The first one talking to oversight and scrutiny. The second one talking to law making public participation. I mean, the first two really are the key mandates of the institution and how we do that. We do that through ensuring that the people of Houting participate in the work of the institution and also that we align and collaborate with other organs of state to ensure that uh, we are able to uh, deliver on the mandate of the institution. And the fifth one really is to ensure that uh, all the work that we do as uh, uh, the legislature, we ensure, we ensure show that uh, you know there is compliance with the uh, relevant judiciary requirements and principles of good governance which uh, this type of compliance is what also has resulted in the institution um, sustaining its clean audit in terms of uh, the process i mean the 
annual report process development is quite uh, long. Uh, by February already, the AG is already on our premises working towards ensuring that they prepare for the audit. And in earnest, we start in April, where we appoint an, a, a task team that assists the institution in uh, ensuring that our report is uh, developed accordingly. So the this is uh, to provide a timeline and also to uh, provide some form of uh, you know uh, assurance to the uh, honourable members that uh, before we get to the stage where we even publish the annual report, we would have done a lot of uh, reviews internally, including, as I indicated, submission to internal audit, including also, uh, and that happens before the end of May. So that by the end of May, we then submit the draft to uh, uh, the Auditor General as well as the Treasury, but it would have gone through all the internal processes to ensure that uh, it is aligned according. After submission on the 31st of May, from the 1st of June up to the end of July, is really the audit process working with the AG, looking at the potential findings, uh, addressing them, and updating the annual report where necessary to do that. And uh, by the end of uh, August, we need to have the annual report uh, finalized, printed, and then submitted to oversight structures. So this slide, uh, Chairperson and Honourable Members, is really just giving a sense of what, what constitutes the annual report. Um, the main, uh, uh, you know, a part of part B is the main part that really talks to the performance of the institution. Part C, it talks to governance overall. Part D talks to um, human resource uh, information that is supporting the implementation of the plans and then the financial information is in part E. So all the programs make a contribution towards the development of the annual report and on the last slide it just shows you which program makes input into which uh, side of the annual report. This section chairperson is uh, now uh, just giving us a, a dashboard or summary of the 21-22 audit outcomes. You will see that in the first uh, block that has, a, that, that has an orange outline, it speaks to the clean audit outcomes that I referred to. And this is really showing that three big blocks uh, that are green shows that uh, GPL has been able to sustain a clean audit outcomes for the last three uh, consecutive years. Um, with which means that this was an unqualified um, audit outcomes with no material findings. The second block, which has a blue outline, really speaks to issues of um, assurance level. I will probably just focus on the on the yellow uh, blocks just to give a sense. Uh, the green ones is really indicating that uh, you know we are doing well. And the arrows that are that are, are sideways are showing that we have actually not improved or regressed. We are um, on the same level as the previous uh, reporting or auditing period. So two areas where we regressed is on the senior management as well as, as on internal audit with those uh, red arrows uh, showing below. So with regard to senior management, it's really speaks to the responsibility of senior management to ensure that uh, control weaknesses are identified and addressed. Um, this is also linked to, to the adjustment of the audit financial statements um, and other overall weaknesses uh, that were identified during the auditing process. With regards to internal audit as a quality assurance provider, there were some non-technical misstatements uh, that were not identified during internal audit review processes of the draft AFS, and that is why you see it as a um, low, uh, I mean, um, a red uh, arrow showing downwards, which is a regression. When we come to the third block, which has a red outline, it speaks to the status um, of the drivers of internal control. So there are three key areas, leadership, financial and performance management, 
as well as uh, governance. Uh, basically, for leadership, we maintained uh, the status. Uh, the second one, we regressed, and even on governance, we regressed. But you will see that also the, re the, the regression, both on uh, financial and performance management, as well as on governance, is related to what I had already uh, spoken to earlier. With regards to uh, proper uh, records management, there were no changes. It's an area that needs to be strengthened. Uh, processing of um, processing and um, recon reconciling uh, control, regular reporting, compliance, monitoring, and IT systems were areas that were highlighted as needing uh, to be strengthened. As far as the uh, compliance monitoring issues we had to do with the compliance with legislation in terms of the 30-day uh, payment processes as well as deviation from uh, normal procurement processes on the IT. It was um, mainly that there needs to be a comprehensive approach to cyber security risk. Uh, this must be established and ensure that uh, a, cyber, a specific cyber security risk program is developed by a GPL. And there has been some work that we are working towards it, and I will speak to it a little later. And then on internal control under governance, it's the same issue uh, as highlighted above. When we come to the fourth block that has a green outline, you will note that there's a, of the six, there's only two areas that uh, are of concern. The first one is on human resource uh, management. And on HR, the main uh, finding was the high vacancy rate as uh, at the end of the um, year on actual on senior management. And this is something that needs to be addressed um, to ensure that the critical uh, critical functions are then uh, taken care of uh, and were then able to implement accordingly. On information technology, I have already spoken to. The last block uh, speaks to the best practices that should be maintained. Uh, uh, you know, uh, firstly, they're saying the speaker and the accounting officer must continue to set the right tone at the top of the institution. And uh, by doing so, uh, they must provide the necessary level of uh, oversight over uh, financial and non-financial reporting, as well as uh, compliance with laws and regulations. So uh, what we have done uh, mainly is that we've recently had an audit strategy workshop where these key findings uh, have been analyzed and action plan developed on how, how to address these uh, on time as, and also to ensure that they do not necessarily recur in the next uh, reporting period. When we go to the next slide, so, yes. slides, I'm not sure if they are moving from your side. Okay, the next slide slide is really uh, to look at the performance overview for the year. Uh, this slide is showing performance uh, by program and by strategic outcomes. We have five programs and uh, of the five programs that provides the number of uh, key performance uh, indicators and targets and uh, is the program that had four targets, I mean, and KPIs not achieved and the other programs were able to um, achieve uh, their planned targets. I will speak to the areas of uh, deviation a little later. On the other block, you will then see also of the five strategic outcomes. Uh, we had uh, areas of uh, deviation on oversight and scrutiny. Uh, we have one on public participation, as well as um, we have also area of deviation on uh, governance. Um, as highlighted there. Overall performance at the end of the year, it was 83%, which is a 20 out of the 24 KPIs that were planned for uh, were achieved with a rating scale of um, you know 100% achieved. Anything that is less than 100% would then be determined as not achieved. And uh, this is an improvement from a uh, performance of the previous year at 68% that was achieved. So now as we look at um, performance by strategic outcome, really just to give highlights, uh, chairperson of achievement, 
under oversight and scrutiny, we have uh, six targets and uh, five of those uh, were achieved. One of the areas of non-achievement was on uh, resolutions. We had planned to achieve 95%, but we only uh, were able to achieve 34%. You will also note that in the uh, based on the trend of a uh, non-achievement of this particular KPI in the last few years, we then reviewed the uh, percentage achievement for the current uh, implementation period and we reduced it downwards, but there has been improvement as far as this is concerned. On some oversight reports, we had planned 130, we achieved uh, 170. Uh, oversight questions um, that were produced were also more. Uh, from 42, we achieved 59. Motions, there were a total of 10 motions and uh, six uh, substantive motions were adopted. And we also had uh, uh, four performance uh, reports on the performance of uh, various committees. And the last one, which was not achieved, was actually committee inquiries. When we go to the second um, a strategic outcome, which is lawmaking, we had four targets uh, that were uh, four targets that were planned, and we managed to achieve all of them. Here, the highlight is really, you know, the processing of uh, 28 uh, bills, signing of four uh, bills into law. Apologies, I think there's a, a typo there, and also six. Um, regulations approved. We also have a report that we uh, develop on an annual basis on uh, the implementation of the lawmaking mandate, which is the fourth one. The third uh, one um, outcome is public participation, where we had two targets. Of the two targets, um, uh, one was uh, not achieved, which is a, a, a number of petitions considered. And then the number of people reached through various digital media uh, target was actually achieved. Um, Chairperson, uh, where in outcome number four on cooperative governance, we participated in a number of national, regional, uh, local, as well as the, um, international uh, engagements. Um, where we saw participation of the GPL at uh, you know. Uh, uh, SOCAT also uh, leading the Shouting Speakers Forum to ensure implementation of the, uh, you know, uh, recommendations or resolutions of the National Speakers Forum. We partnered with the ITC ILO on gender responsive budgeting training. We also signed a memorandum with the National School of Governance on uh, leadership and management capacity training. And also we worked with a number of uh, academic institutions, civil society, for mutual uh, beneficial outcomes in the previous year. These are just highlights. Much more was also done. And the outcome number five that talks to governance administration, we had uh, 10 uh, targets and uh, we achieved uh, 11. Um, the next uh, slide, Chairperson, is really uh, more detailed in terms of uh, which are those targets that were planned, which ones were not achieved. And perhaps I will not uh, go into detail with them because already in the highlights, I've already spoken to, to them. The uh, 1.6 year Chairperson is on the uh, committee inquiries the reports that uh, we had hoped that we would have had one adopted. So this too has been a target that we have not been able to reach for various reasons since the beginning of the of the year. I mean, of the term. Outcome number two, you will see that all four targets that were planned were achieved uh, accordingly. So there are no deviations there. Um, and then um, outcome number five, uh, we have um, targets that were planned, sorry. Um, there were targets that were planned. Uh, those that were not achieved have already been uh, referred to uh, in the earlier discussion. And then lastly, um, if you look at uh, performance deviations uh, and reasons for non-achievement, there, there were four that we I sort of spoken to earlier. And of those, um, you will note that uh, on house resolutions, uh, we, in terms of mitigating it going forward, the first thing that we have actually done is to look at the trend and adjust the planned target and reduce it in the current year, but also to increase allocation of time 
uh, for consideration of uh, resolutions going uh, by the committees. And uh, Chairperson, if you look, um, when we come and present the second quarter report, you will see that there has been some improvement as far as this is concerned, even though the target has been lowered, but there's been uh, some improvement. Uh, committee inquiries, uh, there has not been any um, improvements there. We don't know what will happen by the end of the year, because earlier on there were a number of uh, challenges that we had uh, faced. Uh, including also, you know, getting legal opinion to look at, uh, at that a particular uh, committee inquiries that was already uh, started, but uh, we hit a, a, bit, a number of glitches there and we needed to get a legal opinion, which we then had. And then also uh, at the time of uh, doing this report, we were also seeking technical uh, expertise to assist us with the implementing of that particular uh, committee inquiry. On petitions also, there were challenges uh, with the program where we had to reschedule and prioritize the, you know, the setting of the appropriation bill, which then impacted negatively on the petitions committee. So going forward, we uh, have planned and have been implementing, ensuring that, uh, you know, uh, we this improvement and we adhere to the approved uh, program and not at the, you know, um, a disadvantage of other committees. And then lastly, um, I see uh, 5.9, which was uh, the implementation of the annual um, performance plan for the integrated communication a plan and strategy, which is at 70% uh, with 10% deviation. So all the planned activities uh, that were not uh, implemented in the previous reporting period are now being uh, implemented uh, accordingly, uh, Chairperson. So this uh, would then take care of that part of the uh, deviations. And then on the financial Financial uh, outcomes, uh, Chairperson and Honourable Members. Uh, this is really a summary to say that our annual financial statements, as indicated earlier, were prepared in accordance with the standards of GRAB and the section of FAMPLA. So revenue of uh, 875 million, which is the Treasury allocation, decreased by 2.3% due to the reduction in the annual appropriation and as well as direct charges during the year under review. We had 1.6 million of our own revenue, which was an increase by 23%, mainly due to a parking fee escalation as well as the income that we got from hall bookings, which was previously not the case because of the COVID-19 restrictions. We had an interest of 14 million, uh, which was an increase of, uh, you know, just under 24% due to the overall increase of um, the bank balance. And our operating expenditure for the year uh, of 7, 8, 9 million increased by 40%. And this is mainly due to the realization of COVID-19 regu uh, regulations, where you found that we had a number of uh, public participation or public engagement activities as well as a uh, traveling, which we did not had uh, in the last uh, reporting period. Um, I know that uh, the next slide is uh, also key financial highlights, where you see that by the end of the year, we had uh, 13.7 million uh, receivables, uh, parking debt, as well as uh, political party funding, which I think in terms of the political party funding that has been offset in the current year. Um, and then we also had uh, cash equivalents that have increased. And um, we also, by the end of the year, had um, a employee benefits obligation, which constitute 41% uh, of all the liabilities of the, of the institution. Overall, Chairperson, the GPL maintained a favorable net asset uh, position for the year. And uh, in conclusion, um, we, uh, there was overall improvements in the 21-22 uh, plan uh, implementation and overall uh, performance of the institution. We've been able to uh, sustain and maintain our clean audit 
And we've also put in place measures to address those four areas of underperformance, Chairperson. I will pause there. Thank you. Thank you. The, the response is the response, Secretary. Okay. Uh, if you could just flight uh, the responses to the annual report. Okay. Okay. So while whilst Matabo is flighting the the responses, let me just uh, also clarify a an issue that members may have so that uh, it may not arise relating to the political party funding debt. Um, members will recall that uh, in terms of the uh, political uh, support, uh, we provide money, we pay money to parties uh, upfront at the beginning of the uh, financial year in April, on the 1st of April. And out of the audit uh, outcomes uh, of parties, there may be uh, issues that gets to be uh, raised and one of the political parties had an issue that related to uh, procurement of uh, land, uh, which we raised uh, with the party. And we subsequently in the in the next uh, financial year this year, we then deducted the amount of money which was uh, uh, in question close to about uh, 6 million, uh, which we have uh, withheld until the audit issues are satisfactorily uh, addressed. Okay, Chair. So I thought it was just important to just inform members about uh, that as a, as a start. Chair, we received the questions uh, from the committee and uh, these are our responses, which were also sent to the committee. I will try not to read verbatim, uh, Chair, but just to talk to some of the issues in terms of uh, the first question around the underspend of uh, 93.46 uh, million. We wish to respond uh, as follows, uh, Chair, that uh, the what what has contributed to that underspend. Firstly, were the projects which were rolled over from 2021 to uh, 2022 to the tune of about uh, 37.8 uh, million, uh, uh, including in that is the uh, area around the rehabilitation of concrete and tile roof uh, projects. Uh, Chair, we need to say that uh, these areas continue to give us uh, serious challenges as we still, and, 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 and the committee will recall that this is a matter that has been you know, ongoing for many, many years. Uh, but even to date, we still don't really have uh, responsive uh, tenders. We, we're reworking on our terms of uh, uh, reference and engaging even professionals to help us develop uh, terms of reference that can enable us to conclude uh, on this uh, project. Uh, the second area is on the communication strategy. Uh, this related in the main to a number of uh, work that needed to be done under the communication uh, strategy, the internet and intranet uh, development, where again the tenders were cancelled uh, due to uh, low response uh, from the uh, bidders. This was also uh, you know, uh, rolled over into the current uh, financial year. The next area is on the uh, HR strategy. This is around the area relating to uh, job evaluation, grading and salary benchmark exercise, as well as consolidation of the organizational development business processes. Uh, Chair, when we go into the other details later uh, in response to the, uh, the, the, the vacancy rate, we will talk to uh, some of these areas uh, and what we are currently uh, doing with regard to the OD value creation and the processes that we have uh, currently 
uh, embarked upon. We will come back to the uh, to Okpol to present on that specific uh, area. Uh, you know, at at, uh, at a time that the committee maybe uh, want us to come to present on that. Then the next area was the upgrading on the auditorium and the committee rooms for hybrid. This again took a bit longer uh, to conclude. This was as a result of some of the challenges that we had uh, regarding uh, stock shortages, uh, which were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. This related in the main to the microchips uh, and stock uh, shortage that was uh, experienced uh, internationally. Uh, and some of the equipment that we are using uh, come from the uh, approach. Uh, we'd glad to say that uh, to date, the committee rooms are indeed uh, operational uh, and committees can, I mean, committees can be able to have hybrid sessions in the uh, committee rooms. However, the only outstanding one is the auditorium. Uh, and, and for that, uh, will, that will be concluded uh, by the end of this uh, financial uh, year. The next area was relating to the laptops. Again, this was an area that was impacted upon by uh, stock shortages uh, in the world. Uh, audiovisual equipment and and uh, and laptops. We have subsequently, uh, I think only last month, received uh, laptops that we had ordered almost two years back. You know, so we're only able to uh, receive them uh, now, and we're now looking at uh, procuring uh, additional uh, laptops. And some of the laptops for, especially for staff. Uh, have been uh, redundant over a period of uh, of time. Uh, members' laptops were issued in uh, 2019, and ordinarily they should have been uh, replaced uh, this year. Uh, however, uh, emanating also from the discussions in the IAC, where we indicated that uh, you know if we were to issue laptops to new laptops to members now. It would mean that we must buy new laptops again for the uh, after uh, for for the seventh term when we start uh, 2024. So our key priority now is to focus on the preparations of uh, 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 the seventh term and procuring of the laptops for that. But also looking at uh, other options, including the leases, uh, to ensure that uh, when members may have challenges with laptops, there should be no uh, problem uh, with that. The other area chair was the printers uh, and uh, parties will also be aware, including the institution that we did have uh, towards the end of, uh, of, of, of 2020, during the start of COVID, we, are on the, we, we, had, almost, we, we had almost concluded procuring uh, list uh, printers. But because of the COVID uh, situation, we basically cancelled uh, that list uh, because it would have meant that uh, for the two years that uh, we're not at the institution, we would have been paying leases for uh, you know printers that do not have work. Uh, however, uh, as, 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 as the COVID conditions uh, eased, there was an indication that there is a need for uh, printers, and we did provide uh, uh, printers, uh, which are leased uh, currently for about uh, six months uh, to enable us to have a proper assessment of the need for uh, laptops in future. The other areas are just a smaller uh, amounts here, and I will not really go uh, uh, through that. In addition to what we have spoken about, there were also activities that were impacted upon uh, by uh, COVID-19, uh, and this included uh, committee uh, work, uh, stakeholder engagement, travel, uh, uh, and, and training and wellness uh, programs that uh, could not be undertaken uh, during that uh, period. At a professional and, pro and uh, operational and professional level, 
uh, there were areas relating to ICT services, insurance, consultants, recruitment, and so on, that was mostly caused by, again, non-responsiveness uh, of, the, of the markets. And then in as far as the uh, areas around the public education are concerned, those are some of the areas that were impacted upon by the um, by the uh, 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 included included in the in the savings. Then we have uh, the 7.2 uh, uh, on in compensation of uh, employees, and this is largely as a result of uh, firstly unfilled uh, vacancies. Secondly, it also related to uh, you know uh, delayed uh, pay progression uh, for uh, 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 colleagues and delayed uh, uh, performance uh, uh, bonuses uh, for uh, senior uh, staff uh, members. What we're also reflecting there, Chair, is that uh, if you look at the what is reflected as the underspending of uh, uh, 93 uh, million. Uh, it is important that we also reflect that there have also been savings that were, uh, you know, uh, uh, incurred uh, in the institution, and those savings amounted to 14.2 million. Savings will be a chair where activities have indeed taken place uh, at less cost than what was actually uh, budgeted. Whereas an underspending would mean that. Uh, the activity didn't even uh, take place. So in total, taking all those issues into consideration, our total underspend is 79.26 uh, million. Uh, the next area relating to uh, personnel uh, classification, uh, the chair, uh, I think there's a, a I just want to correct that uh, figure there that it should be 35 uh, vacant positions and not 30. Okay, chair. And these are positions that are on the approved uh, structure. What we've also tried to do is also to break that down into the different categories uh, in the institution. In the response to the quarter, uh, to, the, to, to the house resolutions, We've given a bit more detail, even on the impact of the vacancies and the uh, uh, the, the, the mitigation uh, that we have put uh, in place. And I'll just talk to some of those uh, issues, Chair. I will not go into details uh, about that. Uh, I think we can just pass those areas, uh, Matabo, uh, and just go to 2.2. On the next slide, Matabo. Okay, this is about what plans have we put in place to expedite the filling of these vacant uh, positions and indicate timelines. What timelines have uh, uh, GPL put in filling the vacant uh, positions? Okay, I think this is the point that I was uh, uh, indicating, Chair, and I'm saying that uh, we've given quite a detailed response in the uh, responses to the uh, quarter one uh, uh, house resolutions. And we're quite wary of not repeating the same kind of uh, uh, information. But basically what we are reporting about here is the fact that uh, as, as an organization, we have put in place, we, we are currently uh, working on what we call the the OD value creation, the board in its uh, last meeting approved a process where we can go into a bit more detail in terms of uh, future proofing the strategy of the organization and future proofing the structures, policies, processes that the institution can be able to uh, put in place. And as part of that, we have started a process for that we call value creation and identified, amongst other things, the four pillars uh, which include, and that detailed chair is in the in the report that I, I was referring to. Uh, and, and my appeal will be for members to just indulge me on this uh, moment as they can also be looking into 
the responses that we have also submitted uh, in in terms of uh, the resolution on uh, on quarter one. So so there are those four pillars that we have uh, basically uh, uh, identified, and those pillars include uh, what we refer to as leadership and management. The second one is corporate support services. The third one is uh, ex mandate execution, which includes everything else that has to do with the mandate of the legislature. And the last one is on the area of uh, governance and, uh, and assurance. So what we've also done is to group the functions that go together, uh, you know, in, under each one of those pillars and identify the competencies that will be uh, needed to ensure that we are able to uh, achieve uh, you know uh, the, the to to improve the, the 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 support services that we provide for members to contribute to the improvement of the quality of life of people that work is work that is currently underway and on the basis of that a decision also was taken by the board not to fill some of these vacancies some of which may actually become or some of which have actually become redundant as a result of the new ways of operation. And to fill some of the, these, those vacancies could lead the institution into uh, challenges where some of those positions may have to be uh, done away with. But in order to mitigate uh, on that uh, perspective, so there are different uh, mitigation strategies that we have uh, put in place. The first one is to put in place acting where there are acting uh, positions. The second one, where there's a dire need, you know, is to source in service providers to help fill the gap in the interim. And this will be in areas, for instance, such as uh, strategy planning, monitoring, and uh, evaluation, where we may not have time and resources to train uh, individual colleagues, but we need to be able to provide the support uh, in that area. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, Lebo, if you could just uh, mute. Sorry, thank you very much. The third area of our intervention, uh, Chair, is a uh, reskilling of, uh, of staff. As, as we would have reported previously, there's a a large number of our colleagues whose jobs have been negatively impacted uh, by uh, COVID. And as we move into the legislature of the future, there's a big risk that uh, additional staff members' jobs may be impacted upon. So what we've uh, uh, tried to do in the interim again is to reskill uh, some of those uh, uh, colleagues. So in total, we have about 13 colleagues who are currently uh, appointed in different areas where they, their skills are being uh, uh, improved and new skills are, are, are being, uh, so, so, so they get to be exposed to new skills uh, in those uh, areas, uh, Chair. Uh, okay, so go, go to the next one. I think, Chair, this part, this is where I was uh, basically uh, talking to when I was talking about the value creation and basically giving the history of the uh, the, the the project on the uh, OT and basically where we are at uh, in terms of the whole process and what we are basically also saying is that uh, what we anticipate uh, chair is that uh, uh, once we've concluded these processes we'll be embarking on an extensive consultative process uh, with the institution. Firstly, to uh, you know, uh, focus on the pillars, the jobs, the competencies that have been uh, identified, ensure that uh, if there are additional inputs in that area, that input gets to be uh, incorporated, and then we'll work on the macro and micro structures. And parallel to that process, will also be embarking on a, a processes that uh, include a job profiling a, and job a, evaluation. And at the same time, we'll also be 
ke, you know ke, wake, finalizing the interim ke, migration and placement policies that, that will help ensure that once the processes are concluded we are able to migrate or to place ke, you know where there's a match in those uh, uh, positions uh, the next area uh, uh, question three relates to update on the cases uh, at the moment there are uh, those uh, uh, I think yeah there are those uh, uh, three cases uh, I just need to say that uh, at the time of uh, submission of the report we we have subsequently received a a ruling on the CCMA in relation to uh, Mr. Kwabaza's uh, case. Uh, we are taking that case for a uh, review, uh, Chair, because uh, it is our considered opinion that uh, the commissioner basically made a decision on something that was not even on the agenda. Uh, and just to take members into confidence, uh, this is a case where there was a, a forensic investigation based on, uh, uh, and, and we had reported this matter before in the, in Oakpole and Skopache, where there was a, 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 a forensic investigation based on a whistleblower, uh, and subsequent to disciplinary processes, the two colleagues who were involved were dismissed and criminal charges were also uh, laid against the colleagues uh, for the amount of money that GPL lost in that uh, uh, activity. So the outcome of the uh, 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 CCMA, ignoring everything else, including the charges that have been laid, is that uh, the commissioner says there's no trust that has been broken and that the employee should be uh, brought back uh, to work. Uh, and, and as I say, it is our considered opinion that uh, a different uh, platform uh, can arrive at a, at a, at a different uh, determination. Uh, so so, so that's, the, that's the matter. The next one is around uh, the matters that related to uh, Mr. Khatebe. Uh, all these matters have been uh, closed. Uh, there were several issues around Mr. Khatebe. Uh, you know, firstly, uh, uh, in relation to the uh, claiming uh, unfair labor practice, where he was saying he was not considered for the executive director and was also not considered for the director uh, ISS positions. So he went to CCMA different processes and all those processes were, have been concluded and, and the matters are considered to be closed. What he demanded was that uh, he should be appointed or promoted to the position of the executive director corporate support services or to the director uh, uh, ISS uh, position. But as we reflect, all those matters have been concluded. The last issue chair that is on the uh, CCMA uh, is on the uh, uh, on the on the matter referred uh, by Nehau, uh, which lodged a a a a a a a a, 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 a matter for unfair labour practice at uh, Nehau. This matter is currently underway, chair, and the hearing was adjourned to the 17th and 18th of uh, November. So we'll uh, await the outcome of that uh, uh, report of the outcome of that process, chair. The next area uh, relates to reports relating to uh, 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 irregular and wasteful uh, expenditure. Uh, and I think the question was where, what was, was related to the effectiveness of the uh, internal uh, controls uh, chair. And I think we want to indicate that, uh, you know, we do have a strong internal control uh, measures uh, in place. Uh, what sometimes happens and leads to fruitless and wasteful expenditure, uh, Chair, there uh, are instances, for instance, where a service may have been uh, provided and there were weak communication and make 
Okay, one example that related, for instance, to okay, Hansard, where okay, there was supposed to be a meeting and the services were uh, procured, but the meeting was cancelled and the committee staff did not inform Hansard. So the service provider pitched okay, to provide okay, a service. And subsequent to that, there was payment that was effected again, indicating that there are weaknesses in some of our internal controls. So we've investigated all those cases. The second one was related to the telecom matter, where again there was a negligence on the part of the staff member. And, the, uh, and, 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 and all those cases, and we'll submit to the committee also uh, the reports relating to the investigations, especially those that have been uh, concluded and the consequence management that is going to follow, which goes to the uh, next uh, 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 point, uh, Chair. And, and I think what, what we're basically saying is that, uh, you know, uh, so, 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 so one of the weakness in, the, in our internal control, we acknowledge, uh, is the issue of, uh, you know, communication and also the end-to-end uh, -end business processes. So if committees have uh, procured, identified a service that needs to be procured, Sub, uh, uh, SCM provide that support, Hansat provide the support. There should also be an ability for feedback to finance before paying, you know, uh, that uh, amount to ensure that uh, that whole process is basically uh, concluded. Uh, but we just want to indicate that, uh, uh, you know, some of those uh, areas of uh, fruitless expenditure were, were were also coming from previous uh, financial year. And that for the 2021-2022 financial year, the AG did not identify any uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 UIWF, uh, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful uh, expenditures. Chair. So those examples that I was referring to are examples that basically come from the previous uh, financial year the 2020 2021 uh, financial year uh, okay the next area chair relates to the payment of uh, bonuses and uh, cash uh, uh, leave uh, encashment um the the bonuses that we were referring to chair are related to 2019 2020 uh, per, per cycle and at the time, there were 25 uh, senior managers in the organization, and only uh, 24 uh, were eligible uh, for uh, performance uh, bonuses. It's also important to indicate that uh, you know, uh, uh, there is still an outstanding uh, performance bonus, including for that year, uh, chair for uh, the accounting uh, officer of the institution. And the total amount that was paid over that period was about uh, 2.2 uh, uh, million. With regard to cash, uh, leave and cash share, the only time any employee can be able to cash leave is at the end of their, uh, when they exit the uh, institution. Uh, so the, there's no leave encashment uh, uh, that is possible unless uh, in line with the leave policy, uh, uh, you know, uh, the employee basically uh, leaves the uh, institution. And in that period, uh, there were a number of uh, uh, exits in the organization uh, leading up to that uh, amount, uh, Chair. Chair, 
The next area refers to the policies that are referred to as have been passed. Uh, the first one on the uh, uh, the IPMS policy chair uh, was reported uh, incorrect. We are currently uh, reviewing the IPMS uh, policy to also take in consideration uh, aligning it to the remuneration and uh, 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 policy and also taking in consideration the issues that have been raised by the Performance and Remuneration Committee about aligning individual performances to the institutional uh, performances. The sport policy chair uh, was actually approved by the board in January uh, 2021. Uh, and, and, and the amended one was uh, subsequently ap approved by the internal arrangement committee in 20 in January 2022. Uh, the next one with regard to uh, firm into allegation of uh, as a listed service of external firm into allegation. This relates to the SNT uh, investigation and there chair the BDO advisory service was appointed to the tune of uh, 498,000 uh, rands to conduct uh, an investigation. The investigation has been concluded uh, and there are about 38 employees uh, who have been identified as having violated the uh, policy. And the, at the moment, the cost uh, to that is about 2.1 uh, uh, million. Uh, uh, and we are currently in a process of procuring uh, you know, external uh, support uh, to ensure that we expedite the disciplinary uh, cases and ensure that uh, you know, the uh, uh, colleagues who may be uh, affected uh, in this uh, regard are also treated uh, fairly you know, uh, in the process. We should be able, uh, Chair, to conclude the appointment of the service provider, hopefully by the end uh, of this month, and will uh, immediately thereafter start uh, the processes of uh, indicating to the affected individuals the specific uh, charges and providing information to those affected uh, you know, uh, uh, employees. Uh, the other question was, when do we uh, uh, plan on finalizing this matter? I, I, I understood finalizing the matter chair to be relating to the disciplinary uh, processes. And unfortunately, as is the case with any other disciplinary uh, processes, we can be able to anticipate the time that we'll be able to start, but the rest of the processes uh, may not necessarily be entirely in the hands of management, uh, Chair. Uh, you know, as uh, affected employees may uh, uh, provide, uh, will be provided with an opportunity to defend themselves. There could be delays in the processes in terms of uh, finding uh, or, 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 or providing uh, information or even uh, delays in instances where employees may be sick or their representatives may be uh, uh, sick, that may lead to the delays. Uh, uh, I thought it was just important to say that uh, the process of concluding the processes may not entirely be in the hands of the uh, of of the of of, of management, chair, uh, because it involves different parties. The last question, I think, chair. I will not go into details about this because Matawa has already uh, provided the response to this in the annual report presentation. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our responses, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary and Senior uh, uh, Management. Uh, uh, chair, chair, you'll note me now. Okay. I'm, <coughs> I'm using vendor equipment. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary, for that comprehensive. And
Okay. Uh, can I, and can in that order, Member Mukwebo, um, Dr. Macheti, in that order? My hand is also up, Mr. Chair, Jack. Oh, Blue. Mr. B Mr. Bloom, yes, Honorable Bloom. Member Mateke also. In that order. Uh, thanks, uh, Chair. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, Chair. I think uh, 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 GPL can uh, assist us with uh, uh, further details on what they are saying. Because uh, one, it's noting that uh, they are saying there is a, a report which uh, a BDO was uh, paid uh, 498,000. Uh, and that report is not uh, before. A mechanism which they want to deal with these 38 uh, employees of the legislature, which they are saying they are concluding uh, a tender process. So I think I will plead with the, the members to say when we finalize on this matter on our own, we need to, to ask for that report because it is paramount important that the fairness of uh, the people who are working for Houghton Provincial Legislature. As this committee, we test both sides. And uh, I heard the secretary mentioning the issue of saying on organizational development. To, he, he sounds so scared that, uh, and he's even saying that on the record that some positions are going to be redundant. And uh, jobs, particularly blacks who are working in the legislature, because. Uh, the, the part which deployed me is very, very uh, careful, and uh, we're going to defend uh, black in particular because we have been abused in the previous regimes. So if, even now we can sit and, and look on, on black people who are going to lose jobs where we're supposed to defend them. So we, we are very, very much concerned. We need the, the response which it can assist us uh, as members of this uh, uh, committee. There is a ruling on question three there, which about the guy called Raymond. There is a, the matter is finalized. It can be reported to us that is pending because the employee is having a, he must be reinstated as of the 27th of October and he must be paid over half a million. And now when the response come to us and say the matter is pending, it's clearly misleading us. And uh, that in itself, we need a clear uh, response. The last thing which I want to, to, to mention when I, a chairperson of the committee is when we deal with that organizational de development exercise and value change, it, it is important to, for us to be presented here that the stakeholders who, who, who are workers, are, are they involved in this thing? Are they aware of really w w what is happening? So that some of them, they can start to prepare themselves and pack their bags as early as in yesterday. And, and tell the staff that our, our job are going to get finished, all those things. So it must be done early because we are observing the in, uh, satisfactory of, of, of the staff by this status check. And uh, all in all, what we are observing, there's no assistance that they, they, they are owing there and behind as far as 2019. So I think the, the response which we're going to be very, very assisting to us was, what are we going to do from tomorrow? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Member Mkweba. Member Mkweti. Thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, you'll pardon me, I have flu, so I might um, not uh, be able to speak clearly. Uh, maybe let me start off, uh, Chair by applauding GPL for receiving a clean audit and uh, also uh, 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 encourage them that they, they must just uh, maintain the status. I know that it is not easy to get a clean audit. So on the questions, Chair, uh, the issue of Mr. Khadev, I think it's a long standing matter. And I, I think uh, Mr. Kosana is correct to say 
um, at some point they did present the the matter to to Scopa when I was still serving uh, in Scopa, and I also appreciate the fact that uh, Mr. Skosana also outlined what could be the delays in terms of uh, dealing with labour matters. Uh, that is Skosana because sometimes uh, we don't understand. For a, even if you can want to deal with a matter as quick as possible, but there are processes that you need to to embark on. And um, if we can just uh, miss one step or flout one step, that is why most of the time we are losing cases. So I just wanted to check. I might have missed it, uh, Chair. Uh, whether uh, Mr. Hadebe is 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 he still in the payroll, uh, or is uh, because now that the matter is going for review. Um, he is uh, at home. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Bloom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to, I think uh, we need to reflect on a question for written reply that was asked in Parliament to the Minister of Finance. And the reply is about the cost of the various legislature. And Gauteng is by far the most expensive in the entire country, and we not we don't have the most members. Uh, KwaZulu Natal has got 80 members, and we've got uh, 73. Just give you an example, and I think I should uh, send this reply. And it was asked by Brett Heron of the Good Party. Um, uh, Gauteng, 825 million is the total cost. That does include transfers to political parties, which is standard, uh, compared to KwaZulu Natal, 644 million. Now, if you do it on a sort of per capita basis, um, we are way out of kilter. So I, I think there's, you know, we need to have a look at uh, how efficiently you're running this this legislature with the staff, because uh, we're really, um, you know, very expensive compared to every single other uh, legislature in the country. I, I will send this, uh, uh, I think I'll send the reply through for distribution to to members. Thanks. Thank you. Member Simon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Member Kate, you are, um, covered me on the issue of uh, HR processes, and I wanted to caution that we be very careful of uh, um, how we proceed and what kind of recommendation we make as a, a committee, because we need to we need to be very careful, Chairperson, of uh, not crossing the line um, in terms of administrative processes. Please, you you were respected and you I'm engaging the response of the GPL, so these members must stop talking to me. No, I'm not here for them. No, 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 please, don't do that. Don't. Carry on, Mr. Miller. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chair. I I am not representing or defending the, the the GPL. Equally, I have the responsibility as a member of the legislature to protect the interest and the integrity of the legislature, and to ensure that we don't actually end up being sued or having to incur additional costs because of uh, mismanagement of processes. So that's why I'm raising this matter that I'm raising. That's one, two. Um, in the in the previous presentation by the head of the department, one of the things that I've raised, and you know that I've been very consistent on this particular issue, Chair, that when you set targets um, and you don't meet the targets, then <laughs> you, you then revise them down and still not meet them. Is the question, the issue of um, the targets or is the question of management that needs to be addressed? I think it's something that we now need to um, get to the bottom of. And I'm very much, uh, Chairperson, concerned that that which has been revised down is a target in terms of meeting um, query resolving. For me, you, that target should not even be set by the department. That target should be looked at in terms of what is the trend. So this is what the trend in terms of queries that we receive in a year. Therefore, this should be the standard in which we are then looking at the queries and how we resolve them. Now, if you then begin to then say we will only um, target so many queries, but if you get 
more than those queries and you're still not being able to meet them or you meet them, then you're still cheating the system. You are addressing what you have said for yourself. And that for me is a problem that uh, we're going to need to get an answer in terms of how this particular target had been set or agreed upon and how they um, intend dealing with it um, going forward. That's a concern that I have. I think the other issues um, other members have already covered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's a member, member Albert. I don't see. Hey, no, I had no question. Oh, okay, um, I think it's, um, it's no, myself. Might have oh, mistaken my name. Thank you. You can come in. Yeah, no, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And initially, I. I did not want to to speak because of I'm one of those uh, members who are new in this uh, uh, committee and the difficulty of how we are dealing with uh, matters in the legislature is that we are dealing with the aftermath of uh, what could have transpired and that is why sometimes even when I I either listen to uh, the secretary of the legislature or an HOD or an MEC or, uh, or a premier uh, presenting, it becomes very difficult for me to follow because of even them it becomes difficult because they know that they, they are dealing with something that could have transpired six months back. We are dealing with it with it six months later. That's why then there's a bit of confusion and uh, time and uh, from time to time the secretary will then want to update on where we are at the, at, the, at the present moment. And I think it's something that we really need to uh, look into as the legislature. But I want to join member uh, Dr. Mukheti in congratulating the, the legislature um, chair on achieving a... So one will be congratulating the legislature. I think, uh, Secretary and, and Speaker, it's, it's important that uh, we must also look at the issues of the targets. Um, you know, uh, achieving a clean audit with an achievement of a 68% uh, target, uh, it, it might not uh, be a, a very good uh, reflection, uh, much as we understand that um, COVID-19 also might have played a role in terms of you not achieving your targets. But you know, most importantly is, is that we are an oversight body responsible for um, holding the executive accountable and you can imagine if the executive uh, will uh, will read that uh, the legislature is achieving 68 uh, percent uh, uh, targets uh, whereas uh, members uh, of the legislature who will then continuously uh, raise their dissatisfaction with uh, the executive on on not uh, reaching their targets it does not really paint a very good uh, picture uh, much as uh, in the next financial year, uh, we are encouraging that uh, the legislature should maintain the clean audit, but we must also address the issue of the uh, 68 uh, percent. Another issue, Chair, that I wanted to raise, uh, much as I understand maybe where the legislature might be coming from in terms of continuously uh, referring matters to uh, outside uh, service uh, providers, but I think if we are genuine and we are serious uh, about being a caring uh, institution, uh, and if uh, much as I agree uh, uh, partially with uh, Member Simang, that we must not be seen as if we are interfering on administrative uh, matters. But the unfortunate part is that we are politicians and some of the things we must really to a tenderized uh, institution. Everything that we do, it will be done through a tender process because it defeats uh, certain uh, purposes. It also defeats the current uh, challenges where uh, the la I mean, labor and the legislature are at, at odds as it relates to the issue that is related to the 13th, 13th check. Because uh, we, uh, some of us, we might not be knowing as to what are the reasons why the legislature is it's not necessarily paying this 13th check. Whereas if you look at the annual report, there is an under expenditure of uh, millions of rents, uh, but continuously we are then issuing out uh, tenders, uh, you know, after tender as it relates to 
uh, what the legislature or its own units within can be able to attend to those uh, uh, issues. So I'm just pleading that we need to be very careful on uh, this issue of turning the legislature into a tenderized institution and also to, you know, um, to spend a lot of money on uh, appeals. I know there's one department that I will not mention uh, by name uh, in Gauteng that uh, continuously when there is a, a, a court outcome, they will then appeal that court outcome. But when you then look at how much they spend on legal fees compared to what the outcome is, it's far supersedes what they are spending on legal fees. We we, we really need to uh, look at those particular issues uh, as the institution. Uh, if there are any other mechanisms that we can use, maybe we need to refer to them, but not spend a lot of money on uh, um, outside service providers when we can uh, internalize uh, those services uh, within the, the institution. I've listened to the secretary uh, how when you were presenting the outstanding uh, performance bonus that is due to the accounting officer, which happens to be yourself. And I'm, you know, I was so happy how you, how you put it. Um, and, and if I listen to you, it's like that, it's like for the two previous financial year, there is an outstanding uh, a, a performance bonus due to the accounting office. And you can imagine that even in this particular Ogpol chain, there are, there are staff members of the legislature who are also at pain on, on this non-payment of the 13th check. Uh, you can understand how they, how they will feel uh, as part and parcel of the, the institution. And I, I do feel that uh, there are more that uh, the legislature should uh, do and look into on making sure that they resolve the labor matter issues because they are affecting how the institution needs to operate. I've raised it, this in the internal arrangement committee and I'm raising it again. It's embarrassing as members of the legislature now, whereas some of us are also saving on Oppol that you arrive in the legislature. There is a protest that you are not even aware what is the protest all about. Only for you to, when you inquire, you then get to be told that no, it's, it's, it's the, this singing that you are hearing outside. It's, uh, it's the legislature uh, uh, staff and you, you are, a member in that institution elected uh, for that uh, effect uh, by even those that are uh, within the legislature to represent their interests and aspirations. And they're having challenges with the institution that's supposed to be, to be, re to really protect their interests. It, it's a bit embarrassing. So I'm just pleading with uh, the executive authority, which happens to be the speaker in the accounting office, to look at these matters that we need to really so that the, institu the institution can, can go back to where it was uh, previously. Thanks, uh, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> can you have the, the responses to those uh, questions and comments? Yeah, Chair, I, I think I will... Uh... I will go first and then uh, I don't know if a speaker may also want to speak, but uh, let me try to respond to some of the uh, questions, uh, Chair. I think, firstly, I just want to reassure members that, uh, you know, uh, anything else that we are doing, including on the issues that are a judgment of or a ruling of uh, CCMA is all in the best interest of the institution. And I'm saying this because I think it's important that we, we clarify this matter, uh, Chair, uh, as raised amongst others by uh, Member Mukwebo. I'm saying this is the matter in which an employee was dismissed went to CCMA, CCMA made a ruling even on matters that are not included in the plea of the employee. The employee was found guilty, had an appeal, and in his appeal acknowledged his own wrongdoing. And subsequent to that, or in line in the process of that, 
we also laid a criminal charge. Now, when CCMA says re-employ this employee or, or reinstate this employee, when there are still these matters that are still pending, what message are we sending? Even in the fight against corruption, because the institution has lost money in this case, and there's and 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 in the in the in the in the hearing, the the the, the employee had accepted a demotion, but the the the, the CCMA commissioner now says reinstate him in his original position which is not even 500,000, it's about 777,000 uh, uh, member Mkwebo. The point is, can the legislature be able to justify bringing back an employee or not challenging, not challenging, because it's not even about whether we bring back the employee or not, but it is about not challenging the wrong findings or what we consider to be the wrong findings of the commissioner. I, I think we really have to, uh, you know, uh, understand even our fiduciary responsibility when it comes to matters such as these uh, ones, you know. If, 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 if it is that, uh, you know, in the judgment of the accounting officer, uh, you know, the accounting officer is acting frivolously, you know, and wasting money. I think action must be taken against the accounting officer. You know, if if that's if that's the the impression that uh, you know we're just doing these things because we have no interest of the organisation, I think it is important to understand uh, that part. The second part that I think is also important to understand is over the past two years during COVID, the institution has been paying employees without skipping any month, even those that were not doing anything. And the future of the legislature is changing. All we are saying is that we need to be able to ensure that employees whose jobs may be impacted upon have the skills for the new positions that will be created. So we don't have to go out and employ new people for positions uh, that, that require new skills when we have an opportunity to retrain and reskill employees uh, in that regard. And that's part of the point we are raising around the response to the 13 employees uh, who are supporting public participation, because that's an area that has also been identified as a weakness in the institution. We have had a situation where a transversal mainstreaming uh, focal person resigned. Over a period of time, we have not been able to fill that vacancy, partly because already some of the employees in the organization who could be able to fill that position are not willing to take a contract position when they are already being paid higher than that and are on a permanent positions. In the current uh, performance of the institution, we, in as far as training on transversal mainstreaming is concerned, we have not been able to achieve the targets because we have no capacity in the institution to do so. But we can't fill that position on a, on a, even on, 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 we can't re-advertise that position. And that's the reason we're saying, let's get a service provider to help us in this area where we do not have the capacity in the organization. We could be paying the salary uh, for that, but what we will get out of that uh, service provider will be less than what we would have paid as a salary for now. That position will probably still be relevant in future. 
And once you conclude the organizational structure, we'll be able to fill that position. The fourth area in as far as uh, strategy planning, monitoring and evaluation is concerned. We have only three colleagues who are doing all that work in that area. We've had several processes of expression of interest to no avail. And we're saying again here, whilst working on, on, on creating capacity for the future, let's have support that can help these colleagues. These colleagues at the moment are reveries and players in as far as the issues of uh, you know, performance monitoring is concerned. And they're doing an excellent job, chair and, and honor members, you know, but it is strenuous on them. If one of them gets sick, there's a huge pressure on the two that are remaining. So we have to be sensitive okay, to that. So we're not talking about the okay, you know employees losing their jobs uh, and so on and so forth. We're talking about reskilling. We can't just as an institution that's looking into the future continue to rely on skills that may not help us okay, uh, you know uh, into the future. We've had colleagues who are in uh, uh, printing, for instance, you know, there's less printing that is currently taking place. We can't just get rid of those colleagues. That's the reason we're saying let's reskill them uh, in, in, in some of those uh, areas. And maybe some of them can be reskilled even in terms of fixing the machines that we are, we, we are getting, you know, in the event that the institution will prefer not to lease, but to, uh, to outrightly buy uh, this uh, uh, equipment uh, and so on, you know. Uh, so, so those are some of the issues that uh, I think are important uh, for the committee and for members to to understand. So we're not just uh, going out of our way, you know, uh, to uh, get these additional services uh, and, and so on. The the second issue uh, relates to. Uh, you know what uh, member Matseke uh, raised, uh, I think referring to the 68%, this was the achievement in 2020-2021. In 2020, uh, in 2021-2022, the achievement is 83%. We're still not satisfied with that. You know, uh, our, our, our target was 88% before. So, but it's an improvement from the previous financial year of about 15%. But it is also important, and this point also relates to the area that the uh, member Simang uh, raised about, uh, you know, lowering the targets uh, and so on. The the targets that has been uh, reduced uh, on our members is the target that relates to house resolutions and and let me explain what these uh, are all about these are about the extent to which the committee applies itself to the responses provided by the department or the legislature and expresses an opinion on its satisfaction or dissatisfaction with that a, a opinion. If you look into the previous financial year, as Matabo had reported, we had close to about uh, 770 uh, 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 and, and resolutions. Committees were only able to deal with 270 something uh, resolution, constituting to about 34%. And this has been an underperformance over a period of time where we would have set the target at 95%. And because of the consistent uh, unachievement in that area, we thought maybe our uh, baseline may not be correct. Let's reduce the baseline. And I need to say that it, apart from just reducing the baseline, the issue about uh, you know the focus of the uh, standing committee of chairpersons on the issues of resolution, the awareness that has been created about the importance of resolutions 
uh, from the considering of the report responses from departments and resolutions by committees has helped a lot and to date in the in the court, two quarters that uh, uh, we have as at mid year there's a huge improvement in that area and we believe that there will be further improvement as more committees get additional time you know to consider some of those reports because what was raised previously in some of the committees was the issue of time that committees don't have enough time to attend uh, to, to to the issues that uh, uh, are being referred to uh, with regard to the issues raised by member bloom i think we'll be keen also to get the that uh, uh, information uh, but it is also important that uh, at the moment there is a discussion in the sector in the legislative sector you know of looking at uh, standardizing some of the uh, you know uh, uh, the things that uh, the legislature puts their monies on you know uh, uh, how, how how the legislature's budget uh, with an intention of ensuring that there's more focus in the uh, work of the committees and the work of the house you know uh, and and i think we will we, we'll benefit from that uh, that response that uh, uh, has been uh, uh, given uh, by uh, in, in 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 parliament uh, but we must also i think also understand a, a few other things that uh, legislatures are also structured differently and these are some of the things that we're trying to work on as a uh, part of uh, standardization and so on you know um, in some of the legislatures you may not have a researcher per committee And, and it is important that when we do a comparison, we do a comparison of like for like. We compare, you know, uh, apples with apples and not compare apples with uh, something else, you know. And I'm not suggesting that that is what is being done at this stage through the question by Member Bloom. But all I'm saying is that it is also important to look at, uh, you know, the structures in those uh, legislatures and what services they provide uh, uh, to members and how they impact on their ability to uh, employ uh, uh, more staff to support committees or vice versa you know i, I think it's important to look into 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 those aspects also uh, i think just in conclusion i just want to say to uh, to to the members that uh, I think apart from and this is about matters whether we you know apply for review or do not go for review of decisions including the decisions of CCMA or even the labor court itself we don't just take those decisions lightly We also liaise, we also brief the executive about the challenges that we have and provide cogent arguments around that. Just on the last matter that was concluded, that started in 2016, on the what was referred to as Malfani and others versus GPL. Again, there was lots of pressure to say, just settle this matter. But I don't think that there was an understanding of the implication of that settlement or an understanding of the implication of simply abiding by the decision of the uh, uh, CCMA commissioner and the Labour uh, 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 Court. Because th that not appealing those decisions going to the appeal, Labour Appeals Court would have meant that every senior manager is permanent in the institution and that nobody gets to be employed on a five-year contract. And I'm not sure that's what the institution would have wanted to have. 
So had we not appealed that decision, we would have been stuck with that. But it would also have set a precedent for the whole country, not just for the legislature, but for the whole country, where employees may just decide, you know, we are now on a permanent basis, even when there's no decision about them being on a permanent uh, employment. The same applies to the issue of Mr. Kwabaza. Uh, uh, we are convinced that the CCMA commissioner has erred in his judgment. And we appeal to the committee and to members to allow us to do things in the best interest of the institution. If we were in this case as an example, speaker and honorable members, if we were to bring back Mr. Kwabaza without appealing this decision, the legislature could be accused of wasting state resources for an investigation when it brings back an employee who is being investigated by the police for corruption. And what message what moral authority will we have as an institution in the fight against corruption? I really want to leave it uh, the uh, uh, chair and honorable members and and really appeal to to members. We, we acknowledge that uh, there the are reports that we'll have to bring to the uh, committee, including a detailed report on the value creation. Okay, I think it's important that we come and present that to the uh, to the committee chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary. Uh, if I may continue. No, speaker. no, thank you, Chair. Uh, let me maybe apologize to honorable members of OPOL who feels that they might not have been informed about the, the action strike by, by uh, our trade union movement. But I know that on a daily basis, there's a communication that is posted uh, in the legislature uh, you know, through the emails to indicate what is happening around it, meetings, and so forth. Uh, maybe at times members might not have an opportunity to go through. But in terms of those that um, are relevant in terms of committees or even ad hoc committees that deals with issues of labor, uh, they, are, they are aware of, of these particular matters. Um, they have been informed and including the presiding officers, they are aware of, of what is taking place. But maybe at a political level, Chair, we need to caution ourselves so that we, we separate our responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis the resp responsibility of management. I do not want to dwell much because this matter started uh, with the previous leadership of Nehau. And when this current leadership was elected, we, we had a meet and greet, wherein we indicated that as the political component of GPL, in as much as we are activists in our own right, we might want to actually resolve matters, but those matters are beyond our means and control uh, in terms of the law, but also in terms of the processes where we're in. I know that also in terms of that issue that, that is before the CCMA, individually, not as part of the of the process of, of the meeting that was held. People were even saying, Speaker, why don't you instruct Speaker, you've muted yourself. Oh, sorry, sorry. Individual yeah. leadership um, might have indicated that um, I should actually instruct senior management to actually withdraw from CCMA so that this matter can be resolved amicably. Remember, the previous leadership of Nehawu is the one that went, went to CCMA. And it's upon Nehawu to ensure that. Hey, Colleagues, you'll pardon me, it's school after school now. I'm sitting with my grandchildren now. I'm trying to, to move, and when I move, they follow me. So, so 
the current leadership or individuals within either the leadership of GPL as in the political leadership, but also some of the individual leaders who have been saying I should actually instruct management to withdraw from CCMA. I, I actually can't do that. It's not part of my responsibility. Uh, but if those individuals or even how is the one that wants to withdraw so that they can actually engage uh, on that particular matter, um, there is um, there are intentions to say when and how we can come back and we sit down, that that platform is is available and we're monitoring um, as the presiding officers that so that if that happens, they, there won't be a reason for, for senior management to go and defend as a cause. But where we are at the moment, um, we can't actually give that instruction. And and also senior management can't say, how withdraw from CCMA. It's the right of, of the late trade union movement to actually take the legal route if they feel that uh, they are either being undermined or whatsoever. Um, but in the event they feel that they want to withdraw, I think that that will still be um, acceptable so that the matter can, can be resolved amicably. So those are the intentions. I am also aware that the way other members, um, I know that I was tempted myself, uh, I, I think two weeks ago when the industrial action started, uh, when there were demonstration, um, hearing the songs outside of the of the legislature, I was also interested to go and join Nehau. But unfortunately, uh, what comes before us as an executive authority is to is to stand on the side while you sympathize with with the workers, but you also need to actually do the work that that you've been deployed uh, to actually do. I think that is the only matter that um, I wanted to respond on, but many other issues have been have been have been responded to. But Chair, can I also request that I I withdraw from the meeting? I I have pressure from from the children that are here in the house now. I'm sorry about that. If 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 you allow me, Chair. Yeah, uh, thank you, Speaker, uh, the Secretary. Um, and unless there's something that you really wanted to say as a, as a last part in short before you leave. Oh, okay, that's fine. Hi, Chair. Um, Member Malala? Yes, Chair. I, I just wanted to, uh, uh, just to comment, you know, uh, because this matter of the industrial action is really concerning. We as uh, mem uh, mem uh, members uh, of this portfolio committee or of the legislature, it's actually uh, it's embarrassing, you know, to see uh, staff members there uh, picketing outside of the legislature. And uh, I mean, it's, it's it's really embarrassing. But what I actually want to highlight also is that. Uh, <clears throat> spent 90 million on, on, on human resources and, and, and goods, goods and services. And as I was listening to the sec secretary of the legislature say uh, that, uh, you know, I, I think he said some of the senior managers, um, I don't know, I, I don't know whether I should use the word entitled, not entitled as such, but they are, their performance bonuses are due. But on the other hand, the issue, the issue of the 13th check it seems to to not be it's it's not being ent entertained by the secretary himself because i mean he is part of the senior management and he even mentioned that the the accounting officer which is himself you know his his, his monies are due but what about the the the, the staff of the legislature it, it it looks like to me it looks like uh, both the the speaker and the and the secretary of the legislature, they are not taking the concerns of the staff seriously, because I'm sure by this time this matter would have been resolved if 90 million was underspent for the financial year of 2021-2022 on human resources and goods and services. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I'm sure they could have managed to 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 pay uh, the staff. So that is my that is my concern, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, uh, 
Central Tower, thank you, members, for your participation. Um, I think we are not adopting that report today. Um, Okay, can, I, can I, sorry, Chair? Yeah. Sorry, Chair. Yes, I acknowledge that maybe some of the members of OPOL might be new. Maybe it might be important that maybe we, we through you, Chair, we bring a proper report on this IPMS so that we don't have to use OPOL, uh, you know, for, as part of the negotiations, uh, or, you know, uh, it, it will not be proper. Uh, so that, it's not that we don't want to, uh, but there is a report. Uh, maybe those that have been members in the in the OPOL, they will understand because they might have received information before. Maybe chair, just apply your mind. If as GPL we need to come back, so that we are not blamed, like Honorable Mabala is saying to say we we don't want to. Uh, it, there's nothing that calls don't want to, but it's a it's a fiduciary duties. Uh, that we need to to actually implement. Uh, at times, to be opportunistic doesn't help. Uh, we need to do things as per the the legal uh, 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 prescript. So, so I think that that's my take. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. I think that helps a lot so that we can get a full report on the matter uh, because I was beginning to be worried and the chair of the committee, uh, uh, Secretary. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. I think uh, uh, just just in line with what the speaker was uh, saying, uh, the 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 current IPMS processes do not just relate to senior managers. They they also include what is referred to as P7 to P8 in the institution. And this is based on a report that has been submitted to the oversight body. So it's not also just not just a matter that uh, the administration just decides and just decides uh, to pay. There are processes that gets to be undertaken. The, the, the second point also is that uh, even as part of building a culture of uh, performance management, we have created uh, opportunities to pay uh, you know, uh, employees, uh, all employees, you know, uh, a performance bonus, some of them who may not even have submitted uh, anything. So it's important that we distinguish between the, the areas relating to performance management and to the 13th uh, check. Uh, and, and, and when we have time, we'll also give history to this issue of uh, uh, the 13th check. But the important thing, is that GPL over the past three years, as was reflected, the budget has been reduced by close to about 160 million. And amongst other things, that from Treasury directives was that do not put budgets for salary increases and any of these other performances, uh, the bonuses, and so on and so forth. You know, uh, so even in the last financial year, where the, the, there was a salary increase, ultimately based on the outcome of the negotiations, you know, okay, we went back to Treasury and said, you had said you had not given us an allocation for this. Now there's a settlement. Can you fund it? And they funded it. You know, okay. So I think it's important also to understand that. So when we present the budget to the committee, the committee must also look into some of those areas where we say there is no budget for this. This has not been uh, allocated okay, for this and so on. You know, I just think that it's important, uh, uh, and, and, and we appreciate the comments that have been uh, made the you know uh, uh, areas around sensitizing us about uh, the importance of uh, our employees employees uh, are what drives us are what keeps us going uh, what keeps the institution uh, going so there's no way there's no day on which we will not have an interest of the of the employees but we must also do things not in in a manner that helps sustain the the organization. The chair, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, PS. Uh, in the absence of uh, any other further hands, I think the way forward on the matter is that we get a report soon. We'll, we'll see which date we'll, we'll <coughs> which in which name team will be able to fit to to fit, to fit that. Uh, but I want to thank you, members, for your participation and your comments. Um, and thank the, uh, the support staff for for your work. And thank you, Speaker and the Secretary, for coming. Uh, I think let's move to the next uh, item. We are we are done with the, the office. I mean, the, the GPL. They can be excused. Do we have any correspondence? Thank you, Chair and members. Thank you. None. And any resolution tracking? It will be discussed in the next coming meetings. Thank you. In the next coming meeting. Okay, thank you. Then the meeting stands urgent. Um, but members must be must must be, must be aware that maybe we might not be able to change the dates for the public hearings. Maybe we will need to add, uh, given the uh, to I mean uh, this morning's discussion on this uh, bill that was presented by the premier's office. So I would, I would yeah members must we will look at the one and one with the team and then we'll be able to communicate accordingly. Thank you very much, members. The meeting stands adjourned. And thank you so much for your for your commitment for the whole day. Thank you very much, members. Thank you. Enjoy your Thank you, Chair. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Bye, everyone.